right, so in this video what we're going to be talking about is switches or R switches. Sometimes when I'm speaking I'm just like, wait, what's grammar again? While you're here, uh, please like, subscribe, work all over that, uh, subscription bell, whatever it is. Uh, I appreciate it. I just got a uh, puppy and I work a full-time job, so I'm trying my best to pump these out. I'm not just a material UI guy, but I plan on doing you know, Kotlin, uh, APIs, uh, Android stuff. I know a little bit about iOS, front-end work. There's a lot of things I know how to do, and I just like making videos. So with your positive feedback, um, I would appreciate, you know, suggestions for other endeavors. But let's get going on the switches. So a switch is essentially like, it's like a toggle. I mean, I know you've all seen them before, or at least I assume most of y'all have. But feel free to look here on line two. I have a switch already imported in. Feel free to pause the video and uh, type that in yourself, or just watch as I go along and do my thing here. What I like about switches is that compared to some of the other things in Material UI, they're pretty light when it comes to making them. And so sometimes you wrap things in, in, you know, inside of a parent element, inside of another parent element, and then when you're modifying stuff, you're selecting, you know, where am I disabling this at, or where am I adding the on change um, functionality? This is all pretty self contained, which is nice. And so we're going to have just value here. So checked is one thing. And then we're going to have a handle change. Once again, a lot of this is out of the docs itself, but. I'm modifying it just so you see one or two examples rather than like a bunch of switches back to back. Uh, switch, sure. I'm only thinking I have one or two, so my name doesn't really matter here. We're going to do some input props because it's always nice to have. Remember, uh, accessibility is key. And we'll just say mice, um, we'll say test switch I think will be best. So let's come up here and let's make our um, state or our use state up here. And we're going to set it to actually that's the wrong syntax there. Let me, here we go. And we're going to come down into here. Now I'm typing event. It could be E, just the letter E. I've seen that happen too, and that's that's fine. It's one of those things where it's a pattern you look at and recognize. Now I came up here and named this like, and that was something that only meant something to me. Uh, you'd be screwing over another developer or someone who wants to take over your code. So your event um, is fine just in case you're wondering so let's set value we'll do event target and what we're actually going to want from this is checked so we're going to kind of want this value to come in here and maybe you'll hear that in the background maybe I can edit out uh, my neighbor's uh, dog going wild so let's also um, Come into here and let's go ahead and click this. And we could see that when we uh, turn it on, um, it goes over and it's red, meaning that's been uh, activated. So let's come into here and do something interesting. Let's come in here and just do uh, the value so we could see what's kind of going on. Oh, that's because it's a boolean. Okay. Here we go. So it's false right now. See, right here I thought, I was like, oh, HTML, maybe it'll be super forgiving and just pump it out. It didn't. So it's false, and then we move it over to see that it's true. So when we click it, what it does is it ends up um, just taking the event of what we're doing, so it's going to be the opposite of whatever value is. It sends it up here, and then it sets it, as the most current state. So it was false when it rendered, but let's go ahead and set this to true. And we can see that this renders to true starting off right away. If we came up here to false, we see it starts uh, at false. 
So that's pretty neat. And also, if we wanted to come here, we didn't like the color, we could do um, a series of different things. We could come in here and do secondary. We could come in here and do primary. Or we could do default, which is kind of boring and doesn't convey any meaning. It's just light gray to a slightly darker gray. Now you could override these, and Material UI gives you the ability to, but that's a pretty neat thing to do right out of the gate there. And also, like, uh, let me do this for primary. But also, in case they selected something or they select another choice and they can't use this switch for some kind of option, you could come in here and do disabled. And this, uh, by default, will set it to true. So if you wanted to come in here and do something like that, it'll work. So you could use you could use state up, uh, make another one up here, or some kind of function or logic elsewhere that controls the fate of this right here. So if you wanted to do disabled and just, you know, I don't know why you would want to make it just disabled out of the gate, but that would be a way to do it. Or you could set it to, you know disabled state value if you wanted to go up above and do that too that's that's super cool and so yeah this is pretty much the uh some of the things you could do let me see what's one more i believe you could yeah you could start it as uh checked right away if you wanted to actually no my bad i already had that up here so yeah it defaults to um true right away if you already have it checked I was uh, thinking about the disabled so much, but I already had that value up here. So yeah, this is pretty much the intro to making switches, easy stuff. Uh, thanks for subscribing and all that jazz, and I uh, appreciate it. Alrighty, so in this part of the tutorial here about switches, uh, we're going to go from having individual switches, which you could you know, control the state, do you know, a bunch of stuff. But sometimes you want to logically group things together in like some kind of um, form, right? And so I believe we did this with checkboxes, if I remember. And so this is kind of a more long-winded way to do it. I just previously showed you, but you know, it's for exposure. I think it's important to you know cover our bases here. And so if we look up above, we can see everything I've imported here. We're gonna go make our form control. Tighten that up there. I'm going to make a form label. So this is who's going to take my dog Bernie out. Crap, hopefully me saying his name is not going to make him start going crazy in the background. And so let's make a form group. And we'll actually give ourselves a little bit of space there with, so we can kind of visually see what's going here. We're going to have a form uh, control label right here. And so let's come down here. And we're going to make two of them. And we're only going to have two options, so it's just easier to read. We should, nope, oh, okay, we don't get an error. Good. Actually, we did get an error. All right, sweet. That's fine. That's because we haven't filled these out yet. And so what we're going to uh, do in here is we're going to type control. Now this seems a little long-winded, but what we're going to do is we're going to have a switch and then we're going to have a value, let's say dot, oh, that's really weird. We're just going to type that out as is right now. We're going to go back since autocorrect seems to be a uh, pain in my butt right now. Because I feel showing you this and explaining a couple things may help. Because sometimes I feel the docs, what they what they do is kind of assume you're, like I don't want to say a certain level of programming, but you've seen certain things before. So rather than like atomic examples, they're like, in order to know how to make a switch, you have to know how to, 
use the spread operator inside of an object to then use a spread operator inside of there and you're like wait i just want one you know switch so let's just say uh boyfriend which is me and then we're gonna come down here into the label come in here copy and paste this let's say girlfriend I'd say 99% of the time it's me, so um, I'm not trying to pawn this off on my girlfriend here. So let's come up here and let's make our states. I think this will start to bring us together a little bit more. So I'm going to move down here to give us a bit more space. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, I'm going to call it value. Maybe we need a better name, but for right now I feel this is small enough that it'll make sense. React, then we're going to have dot use state and so this is me borrowing this from the documentation I felt it was a, a little bit better to kind of follow them closely along here so it would make uh, a bit more sense so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have and then we're gonna have girlfriend be False. And so let's come in here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do value. Hopefully, it doesn't auto correct. Here we go. Boyfriend value dot girlfriend. Let's save, and it says unexpected token. So it's not liking something there at the end. That's because I'm not closing it off, which makes sense. It's so easy when you're doing stuff like this to get started here then you have all this other crap going on and you're like wait oh yeah I forgot to add this in right here no big deal so let's make our const uh, handle change or have an event come in so let me walk you through this here so this is a little bit of a bonus so we're gonna have set value and let me open this up a bit in the documentation it kind of does it all in one line I don't want to do this dot state why uh, Visual Studio Code is not being very friendly today okay. actually this would be value that's why I'm doing this in another project so I automatically want to say so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have value and what value means in here is that we're going to take this entire state and it's saying return it as is. So you're thinking, okay, so what am I actually going to change then? This is kind of where this gets interesting. Event target dot name. Event target check. And so what's going to happen here is that say I switch girlfriend from false to true or boyfriend from true to false what this says is give me this entire setback the way it is right and so okay we have our entire state and then the comma what we do next is we look for the event target name so then it's going to look for the boyfriend or girlfriend and it's going to say okay uh, boyfriend okay that's right here what value do you want and then the check is whatever happens when I hit on change here and it flips it from what it was previously. So let's go ahead and see this work. Actually, it's boyfriend for. I'm not my own girlfriend. All right. So as we see this now, and we could probably have some logic in here so we could like lock it off or whatever, but I'm just going to save that because I feel this is a small enough example. What we see is that what happens is when I click this, it says, okay, let's take the previous um, setup so everything's false, but then let's look for boyfriend and then switch it to the opposite of what it was. And that's how you use uh, switches inside of forms or it's the form control. And uh, yeah, pretty neat stuff.